Hi guys, welcome to this week 65 journal on Monday and I'm starting today with just a thin layer of gesso so that my pages look crisp clean again. The first layer I will be applying is made with fluid acrylics by Golden and as you can see I'm really checking if my stencil is in the right direction to avoid having the paint um, smearing underneath of it. I'm just dabbing the paint on with a makeup sponge, a very cheap one, and I'm using cobalt teal and crinacridone nickel azo gold. As usual, you can find all the information about the products that I'm using or colors that I'm picking on my blog. When I was taping this, just for your information, I was surrounded by kids in my studio, which was very funny because they wanted to do the same as I was doing and at the same time they wanted to have their own freedom to choose. So it was quite a challenge to have my spread going on, the camera rolling and the kids having their fingers covered in paint. Now that this is done, I want to soften it down and bring it, take it back to the background. So I'm adding a bit of airbrush color by Golden. It's uh, titanium white, which I'm diluting with water. And then um, going over it with a piece of tissue to soften it even more. And as I really want it to be a wash, I'm even taking out a baby wipe to soften it down even more. Cutting a piece of gauze in half so that it fits my page and then taking some modeling paste over it. This will leave a very fine texture on the page. So it won't be covering up um, the colors in the background or anything. And the fun thing is, by doing this, you can keep the gauze, leaving it aside to dry. And then you can use that one as an embellishment, which I'll prob probably do in my next video. I've done this technique before for a paper artsy project. When you move the gauze around, just be careful not to damage the texture you've applied already on your paper. So while I was doing this, one of the kids stole my palette knife. So when I wanted to continue, I had to search for another one. <laughs> that was one of the fun parts of having this one done. And there's the other knife. <laughs> We really had a great time doing this all together, even if everyone did uh, his own thing. So laying the gauze aside and leaving it to dry. And now I'm protecting uh, the middle of my book with a piece of masking tape so that I can spray some Colorex on and some water to blend it around. Again, I'm going in with a baby wipe to soften it down again, very lightly. Thank you. 
What I'm doing here with the Colorex, you could do with any water-soluble ink, be it dilutions or color wash or even distress reinker, as long as it's water-soluble, you can do this technique with it. And then I'm going back in with the fluid acrylic so that the two different colorized parts work together. This will also help me bring out the texture that I've been applying, the modeling paste that I applied on top of the gauze. And I'm applying it using a baby wipe because I really want to keep it very soft. And taking out a second baby wipe, I'm softening it down even more. Now I want this background um, fixated as my Colorex is water soluble. I'm applying a layer of Bindex which is a translucent glossy acrylic layer and that will allow me to have a background that won't move anymore if I add more um, moisture to it. Diluted black acrylic ink that I used to splatter my page with and then I'm adding a bit of archival ink on the edges. I couldn't be doing this with uh, distress ink because of the bindex as it's an acrylic. The distress ink won't um, stay on top of it. Taking the excess away and I did leave some time for the black acrylic to dry, of course. Now I'm stamping with Memento ink on Smoothie Paper by Paper Artsy. And as my first stamp didn't come out correctly, I'm stamping it a second time. And I'm using Memento ink because I will be colorizing it with Copic markers. So you have to be careful which ink you use. Um, in function of the, the colorizing you will be using. I'm thinking about the color, seeing if this is what I want to do, and then I'm going in with several shades of green. I always go in with the lightest color first, then work my way up to the darkest one, and then again in the other direction, going back to the lightest one so that everything is nicely blended together. This is again something you could be doing with a lot of things. You could colorize with distress inks or um, with water-soluble pencils or with other kind of markers. You could even be using um, watercolor paint to do this. Then taking distress ink, black soot distress ink, to take out the white of the edge. This is again my 2012 moleskin agenda that I didn't use, <laughs> that I'm using now in 2013. I'm applying a bit of vintage water distress ink so that my page looks a bit older. Spraying some water on top of it and then drying it. Using uh, AK Success Punch I'm adding an edge to it so that it looks a bit more interesting. And that's the power cord of my heat gun going to the other side of the table. <laughs> and then adding some more uh, vintage for the distress ink to the edges. Now to have again all the details of the stamp, I'm stamping it again on my background and then gluing the centerpiece on top of it. 
This will not only add all the missing details that I didn't take care to trim, but it will also give it a bit more dimension. Taking out a sticker alphabet to add the sentiment, which of course that day was studio time. And the three little mon monsters are the three kids that I had in my studio that day. <laughs> Now to add a bit more interest to that alphabet because it, it looks a bit dull, I'm using water soluble pencils to add some shadings and some depth to it. Once I'm done colorizing, I'm going over it with water to blend it. Now, if you want to do this, you have to take care to work on a um, porous surface. If your alphabet is made of plastic, it won't work, of course. And then using a lighter shade of brown, I'm going back over it and adding even more shading to my letters. And again, doing the same with the black one, one to make them pop out a bit more. And then again blending. And as you can see, the letters are finally a bit more defined on top of the page. As the paper is suffering from all the water that I'm using, I have to add glue, even if it's a sticker alphabet. And to make sure it will stay flat on my page, I'm putting some weight on it just for a couple of minutes. And then using another alphabet, I'm adding my second word to it. As I have a layer of bindex on my page, which, which is a non-porous surface, and as I do want to add a bit more of a shading to the letters, I have to do this with acrylic paint. So this is the same uh, black acrylic I used to add splatters to my page. I'm just adding a bit more water to it. And then with a white pen, I'm going over the letters and this will add even more depth to them. This is a piece of watercolor paper on which I'm spraying water and dilutions and then drying it without rolling it. I really want all that color to stay on my paper because I want to play around with it in the next step. Stamping my banner on it using archival ink. And then going around the edges with black soot distress ink. Now to stamp 
my banner on my page, I need my stem positioning to make sure it's uh, stemmed where I want to have it. Again, if you'd like to know how to use a stem positioner, there's a video about it on my channel. Now to add some accents to the dilutions in the banner, I'm simply using water and a piece of um, kitchen roll to absorb it again. This will lighten up some areas in the dilutions. Again, you can do the same with any water-soluble ink. and then trimming off the excess. To add even more accents, I will be going in with the white pen, but first I'm adding some finishing touches with a black micron pen. The green on my main image was too greenish, so I'm adding a bit of a blue shade in the same uh, Copic markers. And then to make the three little monsters pop, I'm adding a little layer of glimmer glaze on top of them. This is the icicle one, which is the translucent version of it. At this point I thought I was done, so I stamped my date stamp, but then I changed my mind. So here I go again, water, dilutions, drying it, and then punching a tab. I'm adding black soot distress ink again on the edges, folding it so that I can put it over the page. Now I also want to stamp a word on that tab. Again, I'm using my stamp positioner to make sure it's where I would like it to be. And I'm using a post-it as a mask on my stamp to avoid having ink all over it, as I just want one word of it. To make my tab work uh, with the rest of the page, I'm adding some doodling using a micron pen on the edges and later on also a white pen to add some accents. I hope you liked today's videos. See you back in a while and have a happy week. Ta-da!